96.3. Make sure you get your bumper sticker. We got a bumper sticker here for you. And this means money to you because if you have one of the stickers, every sticker's got a five-digit number at the very bottom. And those five-digit numbers are going to be called out. When we call those five-digit numbers out, if they're your numbers, you're going to get $96 in cash, a little spending money, and you can pick up your bumper sticker at 703 East 8th Street and make sure you get one and get ready to win. Thank you, Sanchez Roofing, our morning sponsor, also Hyundai of Del Rio. Thank you for being our morning sponsor. And we have our guest this morning. Right. Alden Cabello is in the house. I know you stay busy, 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 busy. And thank you for taking some time to be with us this morning. And I reached out to you because I, first of all, I want to congratulate you. Thank you. And I know you have gone uh, full time now. Yes, sir. In the business. And you've got Alden uh, photography, photo, and video. How long have you been doing that? So professionally, I've been doing it for a year. Uh, just uh, two weeks ago was my one year anniversary. Wow. Congratulations, brother. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, as Alden Cabello, LLC, and yeah. maybe photo and video. Um, but it started about uh, 15 years ago as a hobby. I started with my phone. I know there's a lot of youngsters, you know, right now with all the social media, TikTok, everybody's on their phone. That's how I started, and it gradually evolved into me purchasing my first camera, this DSLR camera. And uh, right now, um, business is going good. I mean, I've invested in it. Um, I have you know, my gear, four cameras, drone, um, just about everything. It's, it's part of what the uh, work requires that you be fully equipped and that you deliver what the client is, is requesting. You know, I'm getting goosebumps because, I mean, I love hearing stories like these uh, because it's, you know, it's your passion, it's a dream, and you stuck to it, and this is what you enjoy doing. And you said, you know what, I enjoy doing this, I'm going to do something with it. Correct. Yeah, so I did have my, my full-time job, and I was doing it as a hobby, and then it, it eventually, you know, f first customer approached me and said, you know what, I'll pay you to do a video, and right there, it just jump-started. Um, <clears throat> so the hobby turned into a business, a side business, um, and then here about uh, several months ago, I was, I was on the fence, I said, because work was, was, it was so much, so I couldn't decide, um, I couldn't handle it. Yeah. Or, yeah having a full-time job and then also photo and video and um, things just happened where um, I ended up resigning from work and dedicating full-time to photo and video and there's some factors for those that are on the fence um, I did ask around because I you know it was, it was driving me crazy and um, business owner, owners friends that I have I would ask them like how, how do you determine like what's that point in life I remember you? I remember talking to you yeah and we, I, we you were, were one of those we that were I asked the, uh, exactly. at a, uh, an engagement uh, I think it was a wedding or pizza. Yeah, I'm not sure. We were DJing and you were taking pictures. And you said, man, Sergio, I'm on the fence. I got a full-time job. This is my part-time job. But now my part-time job is keeping me so busy that, I mean, something's got to give. And that's what happens. You know, something's right. got to give. You know, it's like the old saying, if you do something you love doing, it doesn't seem like work. And right. it's very true. When you have that passion, that drive that you have, mm -hmm. uh, and, and you find something that you enjoy doing, you're gonna love enjoying doing. You're gonna enjoy doing it. Getting up every morning and the money will be there. Correct. And some a friend of mine yeah. told me that. Hey, don't worry. Just do this do what you what love you doing. The money will come. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes things, things fall in place. And, and when you start, you're like, man, but where's the money? You know, I'm doing what I love to do, but where's the money? But you're a great example, and I'm glad you took that leap. Uh, you know, and and not only that, but what a timing. Yeah, you know, perfect time. God, God does, works in mysterious ways. He sure does. And uh, oh, then you, you went from, you know, going to your full-time business in photography, and then Del Rio was hit with the biggest, you know, I wouldn't say a problem, but the biggest uh, issue or, or uh, situation that we've never never been through is with the uh, Im immigration. Yeah, we had that migrant surge um, that got everybody off guard. <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, so now I'm, I'm full-time photo video and now it's it's almost like a hobby as a journalist so I'm still you know I get called almost daily to do interviews and it's a good thing so that might lead to something else a bit the doors open if it happens it does ne not, never never did you think you're gonna go into journalism no not at all I did no. study it yeah. uh, when I when yeah. I was in university I did study uh, journalism um, so I do have a little bit of, of a foundation but yeah, um, how it all started. How, how did it start? Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> it's it's rather ironic because I had um, I live in Acuña, so I had to come. I had mail to pick up here in Del Rio, so I came Friday, and I missed the post office by five minutes. Oh. It closed, and they're and they're closed on weekends, so I was forced to come on Monday. So I told my wife, I'm gonna go Monday early morning, 
so I can avoid the, the line, the traffic, and um, that's what I did. So on my way back Monday morning to Acuna, I'm always looking to the sides when I cross the bridge because I've been filming the, the, the immigrants crossing the river from um, even from last year, so I have videos of all that. But um, this Monday morning when I was crossing back to Acuna and I looked over to my right on the, the weir dam, I noticed a large group of migrants crossing from Del Rio to Acuna and that, that, that's, that was strange. I said, why are they going back? Yeah. So I immediately went and got my drone. I went to the area and when I got there, there was a large crowd on the Mexican side and they were going back and forth um, using the dam. Yeah. yeah. So that's when I flew the drone and I said, well, I'm gonna follow them, see where we're going. And sure enough, um, they're all walking. Once I get to the bridge, I see it was, uh, I believe a thousand, two thousand. Wow, yeah. So, I mean, I, I, that's, that was my reaction, I'm like, wow. So I put the drone down, I landed it, went home, did a quick video, and I started sharing it um, with contacts that I know yeah. that are in the news media. And um, I said, you know what, I'm just gonna show it, uh, share it to, uh, post it to uh, Facebook. And that thing went viral. It ended up with all the news outlets. And next day, um, they all started arriving in in, um, in Del Rio. Um, and at the same time, uh, we've, been ha we've been having migrants uh, showing up um, anywhere from 50 a day. But that week, it was 1,000 a day. And that's how we ended up 1,000, 2,000. That's how we ended up with, um, with the 10,000, then 15. And my estimation, since I was on the Mexican side, my estimation was that we we hit nearly twenty thousand. I know the official numbers were around fifteen. But you know but, that. But yeah. but I was on the Mexican side and they were still arriving and they're going back and forth. So there's no way to keep an accurate count. Count. Yeah. 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 You know, and, and it's it's it was very tough for everyone. And kudos and uh, you know thank you to all law enforcement. Something new we have never gone through this. Uh, the mass numbers that you know decided to cross. Uh, and uh, I think they did a great job. Now, were we ready for it? No, we weren't. We weren't at all, uh, especially the big numbers that came across. Yeah, so we were ready, and for what I'm seeing is we're still not ready. There's no plan in place. Um, I know we had uh, uh, Governor Abbott, you know, yeah. support the Border Patrol here locally. Uh, we had DPS, they're still in town, um, National Guard, but there's nothing in place to stop the migrant search. Uh, what we have in place is to process them and, and clear them out. Yeah. But there's nothing to, to, stop, to them. stop them. They're, they're still coming. They're on their way. Now, oh, then there's a rumor that there's more coming? Yes. So right now there's, um, there's, once, see these people, they're, they're, I know from the very beginning the question was, you know, they're Haitians, they're in the Caribbean. How come they don't go to Florida when it's closer? The thing is, these people um, have not been living in Haiti. They've been living in Chile and Brazil. Those are the main two countries. And they left um, 2010 uh, when they had the earthquake. earthquake yeah. yeah. So they've been they, they've already been uh, granted asylum in those countries. They've been they've settled there. They've been living there. Some some of them were business owners. I mean, they had their life settled. Yeah. They were doing some of them were doing well in Brazil and Chile. Um, but then President Biden came into office, and the ones we interviewed, they said, "Well, we have a welcome." Welcome from the new president. So that's why they're coming. And that's why they're coming. And they sold all their belongings. And it's terrible. and one of the main reasons why they selected Acuña, um, and it's a good thing, bad thing. In 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 Coahuila, there's no stronghold of any cartels. Yeah. And if you go to Tamaulipas in the Rio Grande Valley, over there they're paying up to ten thousand dollars. You know, paying the cartels to get across the river. Wow. Here in in Coahuila, um, they don't have to pay anything other than their, their bus and taxi. Yeah. So that's why it was, it was, um, well, we it's a hot spot yeah. for them and more likely they're gonna use it again if, you know, if nothing happens from, if we don't get any support from the Mexican government. You know, and, and one of the reasons I invited you, first, you know, first of all, to congratulate you on your new business uh, and, uh, and second of all, that you've been on both sides of the border you've been on the Mexican side, you've been on the, on the U.S. side, you saw both, you know, what, 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 what was happening during that time. Now, let me ask you, I, I read an article yesterday where some families uh, traveled like two months to get here. Yeah, so there's some that have been traveling up to um, six months. Um, oh. Yeah, so it's, it's, a long, it's a long journey for them, yeah. but they say it's, it's worth it. Um, so, I mean, so it's understandable. Some of them have, uh, they said they don't, they don't have, um, 
uh, they don't have a job, they don't have a livelihood, and they have a family. This is so, I mean, it's, there's nothing to lose for them. Well, and, and, and they take that risk. I said, and if we can make it, I mean, you know, that's their American dream. That's how yeah. they, they describe it. I mean, I see some uh, on the Mexican side, once they arrive to the, to the, to the bank of the river, yeah. I mean, they're like, you know, Disneyland or thank you God, you know, yeah. because just being at the river, to them, it's like, you know, I already made it. Just cross the river, you know, I'll, I'll be processed and I'm in. What did you learn from this? There's a, there's a human element to this. Um, I mean, you can see the people and you can see the suffering in their eyes. And, but at the same time, we also have laws and it's, it's that balance, yeah. you know. In Acuna, right now, there's a lot of churches. Everybody's wanting to help. Um, and then here in the U.S., there's a lot of, um, you know, they, they um, I don't know the word, but they criticize them. You know, go back to the country, what are they doing here, why are we going to support them? So it's that balance um, of being compassionate, but then there's also justice. And, you know, we have to measure both. And at the end of the day, you know, what's, what's the right thing? And we all have a, a, a purpose in life. Um, either we can help them or we can stand up for what's right. Um, so, and to me, that's 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 a decision each individual has to take, and it's, to, to me, it's hard. Yeah, yeah. You gotta respect every decision, but yeah, but it's it's like you said, we're stuck in the middle. We're stuck in the middle. We're stuck in the middle. You yeah. don't you don't know what you know what's right and what's wrong. Uh, you're, yeah. you're you're human. Uh, we're humans, and it tells you you know we gotta help, and also, what's the right thing to the do? Right thing to you do. Know, you, we, have we can't we can't take everybody in. No, we can't. Yeah. Unfortunately, laws we can't. are laws, and we have to respect them. You know, them as and then well. with a group, you know, there's a lot of great men and women, like you said, businessmen that sold everything that are coming to, to the U.S. To, to do the right thing, to, to work. But then again, you know, it's sad, but in the mix, you'll have the bad guys coming in and, you exactly. know, you got terrorists or you got, you know, uh, people that have crime, uh, they're running away from their country because they have a criminal record, exactly. sexual offenders and stuff yeah. like that, 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 you know, are with a group, you know, trying to mix in. Yeah. And see, and that's where our, our law enforcement yeah. has their, their hands tied um, because um, either they focus on processing all these migrants that are, you know, trying to come into the country, or they focus on on those that are that have a criminal background, and at the same time, you know, they focus all the resources like they did here in Del Rio, and they leave all the rest of the border wide open, and that's where the cartels take advantage and yeah. you know cross the drugs and, and all that. So, um, it's it's uh, it's challenging times. I don't think we're prepared at all. I know governors, um, Governor Abbott, and other governors are coming together and trying to again, negotiate with, with the Biden administration, but we're at odds. Um, um, the administration is, is um, their policy is let them in. Wow. So, you know, and we're caught in the middle, like you said, yeah, so, so the ones this, the this may continue. I mean, hopefully they do find other routes, but it may not impact us directly, but indirectly. But it will. Yeah. It, it is. It will. Yeah. You know, and, and when, when are they predicting for them to start arriving, or, or the big numbers start arriving? Yeah, so there's an estimated 12,000 uh, right now in Tapachula, Chiapas. So that's where they're at right now. Um, and they're, they're, what they do is they get a, a permit from the Mexican immigration so they can travel um, through Mex Mexico. Mexico yeah. yeah, and we know that their end result, um, they, they have the option to stay and live in Mexico, but we know that they don't yeah. do it. I found paperwork where you know they say they're gonna go live in Saltillo, Next day, they got a bus and they're crossing the river. Yeah. And that's what they're all gonna do. So we do have those 12,000 in, in Tapachula, Chiapas. Um, they, um, they're waiting for the paperwork so they can travel freely through Mexico. Um, but they've been there so long and the people of, of Tapachula are tired of them yeah. because they're leaving behind trash and everything else that comes with it, no insecurity. So they don't want them there anymore. So now they're saying with or without papers, we're, we're going to the board. Yeah. We're taking off. Um, now, fortunately, some of those are going through Yuma, Arizona. Others through Tijuana. Tijuana, there's 200 arriving daily, about 6,000 a month. So, um, if that continues, you know, they might find alternate routes. Um, but then, uh, aside from the 12,000 that are in Chiapas right now, we also have 60,000 that are coming through Panama and what's called the Darien Gap. Yeah. And then eventually they'll make it into Chiapas, Mexico. So just imagine the, the 12,000 that are there already, plus the 60,000 that will join them. So we're talking about 70,000 alone, just this one group, yeah. that you know eventually they'll make their way up to our, our border. 
you know, and, and it's something serious, something that we got to take serious. And uh, like you said, uh, we prepared is the question and your answer, you know, uh, your personal answer, uh, being on both sides of the border, you've seen the side where they're, you know, in Acuna or Mexico wanting to cross or going across over here. And then you've been on this side where they're already in, in our U.S. soil. Uh, and your answer is no, we're not. We're not prepared at all. Um, not even the, the Mexican government, which um, to my estimation, what I've seen is the Mexican government is complicit in this. And Mexican government, Panama, Costa Rica, all these countries where the where the migrants are crossing, they're complicit in it. Somehow they're they're you know they're making money. They don't want. They know they're not going to stay there, so they're helping them, yeah. assisting them get. They through, can make a dollar, and they're making them, a dollar yeah. as as they're helping them through. Yeah, it's like hey, we're just going to pass through your city, but we're going to give you X amount of money for each one that passes through. It's like okay, now we said that there's got to be so much money. There's so much money involved, and uh, <clears throat> unfortunately, you know that that's what happens. Uh, and the government's just hey, pay me my dues and. You're welcome to just pass by, you know. Exactly. If that's where it takes for you to get to the other side, that's fine. But we make we made a little bit of money. Uh, even going to Acuna just before they closed the bridge, uh, we were in Acuna, and I mean uh, the grocery stores. Uh, they were buying water. They were buying food. The restaurants. I mean, they were spending money. You know, uh, the banks. There's huge lines at the banks. So a lot of these men and women do have money. Yes. Uh, yeah. So th yeah, that's another misconception that yeah. these are the poor families coming no. from Haiti. No, they're not. They're, they're wearing not nice clothes. shirts. They're, they're yeah. I mean, yeah. N uh, name brand clothes. Name brand clothes. Yeah. yeah. So I was. Uh, it happened to me several times where I was inter interviewing them, and they so happened to open their wallet. Nothing but crisp, um, hundred dollar bills. Yeah. So they had money, and all along the border. I mean, I've documented this. Where they're leaving behind all their paperwork. Uh, from bus tickets to the immigration papers, airplane tickets. Some have even paid first class on the airplane. Wow. Um, there's bank records, there's debit cards, all that information, which by the way, I, <coughs> I invited uh, the news media, Fox News, everybody that was here in Del Rio, yeah. I invited them to go over um, and they all said no. So there's very few that you know had the courage to go over yeah. and they saw all the evidence and then Plus, they saw firsthand what it was for for the Haitians um, in Acuña, and also to interview them. Let, let me ask you, uh, uh, then, as a journalist, th is it hard for you to be broadcasting from from the Mexican side, my well, own both sides? Did they give you any problems? Any you know? Did you have any issues since you're you're dealing with another country? Yeah, so I didn't have any issues at all, um, neither from the migrants nor the um, any law enforcement. Which, by the way, they were completely absent. There's no law enforcement on the Mexican side, local, state, nothing. federal, wow. nothing, wide open. So it's it's like a no man's land. Haitians were in control of the whole uh, of whole Acuna. There's the the mayor of Acuna never showed up. He never gave a press conference. You, you know it's crazy, but I, this is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, hey, it's the U.S. mess. They're just crossing. They're just coming through our you know city. Uh, we're making a dollar. You guys go ahead. And everybody else, stay you know, stay away from them and just let them, let them be, let them be. Yeah, and so that's the majority of Acuna. I did ask them, businesses, uh, business owners, and people in general. I would ask them like, what's what's your take on on the migrants going through here? It's like, well, you know, as long as they don't bother me, they can go through. Yeah. But when the bridge was closed, that's and when they started the screaming. Yeah. yeah, because it hit them economically. Right. Um, and and that's one of the approaches that um, I know uh, we all have our our politics, but. That's one of the tools that President Trump used that he put economic pressure on these countries, especially right. Mexico. Do what's right, you know, or take the funding away. Exactly. And, you know, that, that gets their attention. And to me, that's one of the tools, effective tools that, that should be considered again. But like I said, the Biden administration, uh, their policy is let them all in. You know, and, and until they change that, we're going to keep having the same problem. Uh, you know, Biden saying, you know, y'all come on over. We're, we're open, you know. Yeah, and you and and you ask him. I mean, I asked him it's like, well, why now? How come he didn't come when President Trump? is like, no, we didn't want to risk it when he was in office. But President Biden, um, he, he promised us that he was going to help us. Um, so that's why we're coming. You know, blame him. You know, the president is telling you, hey, come on. So, yeah, and he did. He did mention it during his uh, campaign. So, you know, he's going to help him. You're welcome. And that's what they're all saying. So right now is the time. Wow. You know, and, and it's a. It's amazing. It's amazing. And uh, again, thank you, law enforcement. Uh, thank you, uh, Border Patrol. Thank you, DPS. And men and women out there. There's countless of men and women out there that volunteered that uh, will, you know, we don't know their names, uh, 
but we know you were out there, our city, our county, every, I know our judge, I know our mayor, everybody was working long hours, 24 hours a day, uh, you, know, you know, because safety was their main concern, you know, the safety of our Del Rio and safety for our city. Uh, but man, so, you know, so what you're telling me is that there's about 20,000 coming and we don't have a plan yet. We don't, I don't see it, I haven't seen it. Um, I know I did, um, we had our visitors, um, former governor of Missouri was, was here about two weeks ago, and Sheriff uh, um, Martinez. Martinez, yeah. Yeah, he allowed Sheriff us Brown. to go under the bridge and he gave us, you know, a, a, an interview. And and he said openly, he said, you know what, I'm a Democrat, but this administration is not helping us nothing and we don't have a, a plan in place. And so all we can have is, is intelligence that Mexico may provide us, but other than that, I guarantee we're in you, the same situation. If we would bus them all to Washington, just get a bunch of buses and send them out to Washington, I guarantee you something will be done. But I guess since we're out here in the little border town, they're like, well, you know, you guys deal with it, take care of it, handle it. And, and that's the bad thing. So now they might say, uh, you know what, they already went through it, they have the experience. Exactly. Let's yeah. just funnel them through there again. You guys did it the first time, yeah. let's uh, do, do the same thing you did last time. Yeah. Correct. You know, it's terrible. And thank you so much for stopping by Auden Cabello. And uh, where can they get a hold of you? So I'm on Facebook as Auden. That's my page for um, photo and video. Um, I do have my website, audencabello.com. I'm on, um, I'm just about everywhere. Instagram, um, Twitter. Uh, I just opened a TikTok and Getter. Getter is more politics, just like Twitter. But um, that's where I report everything related to immigration. Um, uh, so yeah, well, you, you made us very proud seeing you on CNN and, and Fox News and all these new outlets uh, that uh, reporting from our city of Del Rio, especially being a Del Rio. And so thank you so much for doing what you're doing and keeping us up to date on what's happening. And if you don't mind, we're gonna keep uh, calling you. I know you stay busy. We can either, you can either come in or we can do it over the phone and just give us an update of what's happening with the immigration and uh, you know and, and how we can help. Yeah, I'm available. So yeah, anytime. Uh, and I want to thank you for for, for the invitation. Uh, um, I know my, my photos have been shared a lot when I take photos of the drone photos of the yeah. sunset. Um, and just in general, um, and locally, Acuña del Rio, um, you're the first one who actually invites me. So I, and I really appreciate <laughs> yeah, that. Man. Yeah. We got to help each other out. Yes, you're sir. a Del Rian. You're a Del Rian. And we got to help each other out, especially if you're a business owner, if you're a small business owner, if you need suggestions if you need ideas we might not know everything but i tell you what our then has gone through some you know <laughs> tough times i have too so the mistakes that we've made we would like to share it you know say hey man exactly. don't do this don't do that because i wish somebody was there to tell me that when i first started my first business but you know that was my four-year college right there nobody teaches you to lose you know no school or university teaches you to lose and when you lose i'm telling you you just dust it off and you hit it again because that's how you learn, you know, by falling. Yeah. So you, you can fail, and that's that's where you get your experience yep. and you yep. learn. But like I said, if there's somebody that that can guide you, I mean, you don't have to fail. That's right. Yeah. So uh, you know, we're fortunate to have that experience, and and, I, and I'm open to to share my experiences. Um, I know there's a, I have a followers that you know they'll message me and say you know I want to start in photography, I want to start in video. And I, told him, I started with an iPhone. Just yeah. just go out there and, and shoot. Get comfortable. Get yeah. comfortable, and then you'll gradually grow. You're not going to get from from point A to Z, you know, in one day. It's, it's, you got to go through the whole alphabet. You know, and I always tell you, you got to have the passion and the drive. You got to have that drive because if you don't get up in the morning and you don't have the drive, it's not going to be done for you. Nobody does it for you. You got to get up in the morning. Yeah, yeah. You got to get your cameras. You got to load up everything in your car, and you got to get out there. It's hot. Sometimes you're thirsty, there's no water, uh, but you got to do what you got to do. And you exactly. do it because of the passion. You know, yeah. you believe and it. At the end of the day, it's all about knowing yourself, knowing your talents. Yeah. Yeah. So if you don't challenge yourself, you're not going to know what, what potential you have. And I think that's the biggest thing, knowing the potential, potentials that you have, yeah. um, having the opportunity to, to put them to, to practice. And that's how you learn about yourself. And that's how you feel confident about yourself. And you grow and you take more more um, challenges that's true and you continue expanding and growing that's true very true we got pastor uh, seca martin seca listening to us this morning thank you thank you thank you he's another guy that just pumps you up every morning he'll be coming out at 10 o'clock this morning and pumping everybody up but you know you're absolutely right we got to help each other you know we got to grow and the only way we can grow is by helping each other and especially uh you know 
you see somebody that just opened up their business, go by there and visit, you know, and give them thumbs up. A lot of times, you don't even have to spend anything. If you just stop by and give exactly. them a pat in the, you know, and say, hey, I love your place. It looks great. I'm going to, you know, pass the word around. I guarantee you, I mean, that there is priceless because that gives somebody a little air that, hey, man, I'm doing things right. You know, everything's right. looking good. Exactly. So, so thank you so much for being here. Anything else that you want to share with us? Um, well, I'm still going to be here in Acuña del Rio for now, uh, taking photos, videos. Um, so I'm still reporting um, immigration for um, uh, Real America's Voice. Uh, they're on Facebook. They have the website. Um, yeah, but any, um, I, I do have several um, politicians, law enforcement that, that reach out and ask for, you know, if I have any information. Right. Um, so anybody that needs help, whether it's with immigration, photo, video, yeah. um, I'm available. You know, and, and go to, go. I'm serious, go to his website or go, go to the uh, Facebook. He's got lots of pictures, lots of pictures of what's happening on our border, lots of great pictures, and, it, and this is history. It this is. is history in the making, and we're part of it. You're being part of it, and you're sharing the information with us. Now uh, then, our microphone's always open for us, for you. Uh, uh, our doors are always open. Anytime you want to come by, I want to make it uh, more often. We're going to stay in touch with you, keep us up to date of what's happening with our border, because this is the only way that we're going to let our community know what's going on. Yes, sir. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you uh, inviting me. Thank you. Thank you. Keep yes, up sir. the good work, man. Yes, sir. Thank and, you. Well, that number again, one more time. Your phone number. My phone number is 830-422-9153. All right. You heard it. Thank you. <laughs> Cool, man. All right. Awesome. Good job, brother.